Example 35.2 involves an inclined plane. A 2.2 kilogram block rests on a frictionless inclined plane as shown. The block is connected by a rope and a pulley to a 3.9 kilogram block. Find the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the rope when the system is released. Let's sketch a free body diagram for each of the objects. Let's start with a 2.2 kilogram object. I suggest that there are three forces acting on this 2.2 kilogram object. There's its weight, there's the string tension, and there's the normal force due to the inclined plane. On the 3.9 kilogram object, I suggest that there are two forces. One is the weight, and the other is the string tension. Let me point out at this point that there is a mistake that many beginning students make in problems like this. And that is to say, well, the string tension must be equal to 39 newtons. It must be equal to the weight of the hanging object because the hanging object is what's pulling up on the object that's on the inclined plane. And I would suggest to you that, yes, it is true that the string connects those two objects together. But the tension is not going to be equal to that weight if the system accelerates because the system experiences unbalanced forces. And so the string tension cannot be equal to 39 newtons or that 3.9 kilogram object is not going to accelerate. It would either move with constant velocity or it's going to remain stationary. So let me write that caution down. Again, the caution is that the tension is not equal to the weight of the hanging block. Otherwise, the hanging block won't accelerate. It has been my experience that when these problems appear on tests, and perhaps even on the AP exam, but especially on tests, and these problems will appear on some of these tests that are coming up, someone is going to make the mistake of saying that the string tension and the weight of the hanging block are equal to each other, and they are not. So that's a word to the wise. We've sketched our free body diagram. Now we're trying to figure out what is the direction of the acceleration. In this problem, it's pretty obvious. Since the hanging block has a bigger mass than the block that's on the inclined plane, then the system is going to accelerate in the direction of the hanging block. In other words, the hanging block is going to accelerate downward, and the block on the inclined plane is going to accelerate up the plane. Now, what if the block on the plane was actually more massive than the hanging block? Well, then to figure out whether or not the system is going to accelerate in one direction or the other, I would have to compare the force that is along the incline, the weight force along the incline, that component of the force, and compare it to the weight of the hanging block. And whichever of those forces is bigger is going to determine what the direction of the acceleration is. That doesn't show up in this problem, but it will in future problems. So make sure that you figure out which way the system is going to accelerate. So now I need to write Newton's second law for each of these objects. I have kind of a complication because this 2.2 kilogram object on the incline has a component of the weight which is acting down the incline. I actually need to break that weight into components parallel and perpendicular to the incline. So let me do that just quickly now. So parallel to the incline, I have that the component of the weight that's parallel is FW 2.2 times the sine of 35 degrees. The perpendicular component is FW 2.2 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Now I'm ready to write Newton's second law. Let's begin with the 2.2 kilogram block and then move on to the 3.9 kilogram block. For the 2 kilogram block, I say that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass of that block. The tension is pulling it in the positive direction. The component of the weight parallel to the incline is pulling it in the negative direction. So I say the tension minus that component of the weight divided by the mass of that block, which is 2.2 kilograms. Now let's go to the hanging block. The positive direction is downward. And so I say the positive forces minus the negative forces divided by that mass is equal to the acceleration. So this equation is that the acceleration of the 3.9 kilogram block is equal to its weight minus the string tension divided by the mass of that block. Now I have two equations. I've got two unknowns. 
let me solve that system of equations and you see that I have acceleration that appears in both of those so I'm going to set the right hand side of these equations equal to each other and then solve for the resulting variable. We're looking for acceleration, we're looking for strain tension, those are the two variables that we're going to be solving for. Let me make the observation that the weight is equal to the mass times g and I'm going to make that substitution as I write these two equations down. Again, I'm going to set the right-hand side of the one equation equal to the right-hand side of the other equation and solve that system of equations for Ft. Some of you may object to my subscripts. I'm putting the masses as the subscripts. If you want to call one of the objects mass 1 and mass 2 or mass A and mass B, then feel free to do that. Some of you may want to throw in numbers and solve the system. And if you want to do that, that's okay. Though I think that that obscures some of the physics that's involved, which we'll see come up later. So I'm going to go ahead and keep things as variables. I now have the physics done, and I'm going to do the algebra. So I'm going to cross multiply these equations, and then take this mess and get Ft on one side and everything else on the other side, and then throw in the numbers and figure out what Ft is. Gosh, what an awful looking equation. Yep, but you're big girls, you can do this. What I want you to notice is that I have an Ft over here, there's an Ft right there. I'm going to gather those two terms together on the left-hand side of the equation. I'm going to take this other term that's on the left-hand side and bring it to the right side and then solve that equation for Ft. Oh, Mr. Haynes, you've done a lot of algebra there. Yes, what I want you to see is that I have factored some things that are in common and I have tried to simplify this equation a bit in terms of some of the variables. So I've done a couple of steps of algebra here in a single step. Don't let it intimidate you. If you don't like that, then keep the variables separate and solve the equation for Ft. Now I can divide both sides by this parentheses on the left, and I've got an expression for Ft in terms of everything else. And now let's substitute the numbers in. And now let's put those numbers into our calculator. I get that the string tension is 22.1 just above newtons. And that makes sense. If I'm going to have the acceleration of this hanging block downward, then the tension has to be something less than 39 newtons, or that block isn't going to accelerate. All right, now what? Let's take this 22.13 newtons and put it into one of our acceleration equations. Doesn't matter which one. Let's use the 3.9 kilogram block acceleration equation simply because it doesn't have any trig functions in it. So I'm going to put that into the 3.9 kilogram block equation and solve for the acceleration. And now I substitute the numbers in and I get that the acceleration of this system is 4.32 meters per second squared, which means that the 3.9 kilogram block is going to accelerate downward at 4.32 meters per second squared and the 2.2 kilogram block is going to accelerate up the incline at 4.32 meters per second squared. 